Hi there, this is Nicole Spore for Simon Says Stamp with my February edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my monthly series where we talk about all things die cutting. If you loved your die cuts like I do, I highly suggest you like and subscribe. Now let's get to creating this lucky leprechaun scene card. I was so inspired by this adorable die from the most recent Simon Says Stamp Love You To release that I decided to go ahead and create a fun little scene with it, starting with the luppy, lucky leprechaun. Actually, I think he's just the leprechaun. I'm calling him lucky. Um, and I have die cut him from smooth white cardstock. And I did put some post-it tape behind him originally to kind of help hold him together. There are a couple of separate dies in this set. So there's the backing piece, which is a solid piece, the exact same size as this. This piece that die cuts all the different components, a little pipe, a horseshoe, and a shamrock. I started by kind of holding it together with post-it tape and this really didn't work all that great. I left it in because I think it's good to show when things don't work. And I'm coloring everything in with Copic markers. I do think this is a huge time saver as far as not trying to die cut all of the different components from different colors of cardstock. And I love the shading that you get with Copics. I went ahead and die cut the backing piece for this and I'm going to just kind of start putting it together instead of trying to color it on the, the sticky post-it tape I was using. It's kind of a process. There are a, little, a lot of little teeny tiny pieces, but I do love the results and I love how it turns out. If you guys have followed me in this series here on Simon Says Stamp, you know that I am a huge fan of all the fussy little die cutting pieces. And I'm gonna color in his beard now I have listed the colors I'm using on the screen. For reference, we're just gonna kind of shade all of that and then I'm gonna glue this down in place as well. So this series, Making the Cut, is all about die cuts. I, for the most part, stick to mainly die cuts, maybe some stamped sentiments or backgrounds or little accents here and there, but I really try to focus on the die cutting in this series. So for this card, not only is our scene all going to be die cut, that's going to be our leprechaun, our rainbow, the grass along the bottom edge, but so is our sentiment. I really die cut kind of all the things here today. Um, the main sentiment. We're also going to use a little sentiment strip to kind of balance it all out. And then we're going to use a masking stencil for the background. I love masking stencils. They are a very easy way to instantly add an extra kind of quote unquote layer without the extra bulk. And in this case where we've kind of got all these die cuts and things, but I still want my card to be relatively flat, that's going to be a game changer. These little eyes for this guy are so teeny tiny. I'm using the tip of my embellishment wand to pick them up. The other one's kind of stuck in there and didn't move. And then I'm carefully coloring those in. You can really see him start to take shape now. I felt like he needed a green hat and gloves. I love that he's in this little pot of gold. I think that's super fun. And I also think that if you kind of reimagine him, you could also make it kind of his body if you wanted to and kind of have him be this little round leprechaun if you don't want it to be that little pot of gold. With a pot of gold, I definitely wanted a rainbow. There's lots of different options out there and I'm ultimately going to choose to use the Lawn Fawn stitched rainbow. I am going to apologize ahead of time that the coloring for that is not gonna be shown on camera. I did not realize until way after the fact that my video camera had shut off. I have AirPods in a lot when I'm crafting, listening to podcasts or music or whatever. It also kind of drowns out the sound of um, my high schooler maybe doing his schoolwork and things at home or gaming, whatever it is he's doing uh, while I'm working. And um, I didn't hear the beep of my video camera 
saying it shut off. So we're not going to have the coloring of the rainbow. I do apologize for that. It's pretty straightforward as far as I just colored red, orange, yellow, green, and blue with Copic markers on the different pieces. I did pick the stitched rainbow from Lawn Fawn. I would not have had to, um, but I did. I like the stitching and the components are all separate. I kind of had thought I might almost die cut them from cardstock or something. And ultimately I decided I wanted them to match more of the look of our leprechaun. And so I colored them in with Copic markers. But this set from Lawn Fawn is a fantastic one if you are looking for something where you can die cut the separate pieces. A lot of rainbows come as one die and you have to die cut it from multiple pieces of cardstock and you end up with lots of extra pieces. Um, so that's just a, a little tip there if you're looking for a great rainbow. And then I'm just kind of coloring. I'm having to add a little bit more shading and things as I'm assembling. I will tell you for his ears, I opted not to place those four little pieces around his hat. So you see how it's kind of up above and down below um, on each side. Those pieces are really, really teeny tiny. And I almost thought it looked kind of better um, not adding those layering pieces. So I'm gonna color directly onto that backing piece here as soon as I get the rest of his face assembled and that little brim of his hat. But we're, we're just gonna color those in with skin color markers. And then we're just gonna color the little band around his hat with some cool grays that match the pot that he's sitting in. And then a nice yellow for the buckle on the hat. And then some skin tone for those ears. So cute. I love watching him come to life. So here are those rainbow dyes that I was talking about. Oh, and I did add a few little white highlights to a couple of areas on the leprechaun. Not too many. I did not want to overdo it today. I'm just going to add a little bit more color to the inside of that little pot. So you can see that I missed coloring most of the rainbow. I am taking a little stamp cleaner and cleaning my work surface. I, it was about the green rainbow stripe that, or arc here that I realized my camera was off. So we will catch those final two on camera, but the first three I did not. So kind of lighter in the middle and darker at each end. Don't forget to clean up your work surface as well because you don't want that Copic marker picking up. Like if you use red and then you're coloring something else, the tip of your marker will pick up the red from the glass work surface if you're working on glass like I am. This is an A2 masking stencil from Simon Says Stamp. I am using peacock feathers and salty ocean to create my sky. You'll notice I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom of my panel. I will tell you, that I did not, I don't know what happened. I know I filmed the footage, but I could not find it when I got to here. I think I probably accidentally deleted it. Um, there are two borders for the bottom of this card. You can use any kind of grassy dye you want. I originally, this card went through a lot of transformations. I know I talk about this sometimes, but cards can, sometimes cards come to you and you just, you know, make them from start to finish. And sometimes it's a, prog a process, and this was a process. I was gonna do something different, and so I actually used a slimline grass dye from the Mama Elephant uh, Slim Window Dressing. And so it's going to be super long, and I did ink it with Rustic Wilderness ink, and I did die cut two borders, but that's okay. I'm gonna, one of the great things about this, I'm gonna just layer these along the bottom edge, is that when I trim them away, it's gonna leave me with two borders. So if I wanna create another card at another time, I always use grassy borders. I'm just gonna tuck those into my storage envelope pocket and I will have some 
built-in grassy borders the next time I want to use this set. My other tip is I am adhering my rainbow first and I'm only putting adhesive back behind the two ends. This is because I'm using liquid adhesive and I was a little bit worried that it would smear all over my background. And so I'm lining it up, but I'm tucking the actual glue part back behind the grass. When I have my rainbow exactly the way I want it, that which the grass is nice and hiding the ends of that rainbow, when it's exactly where I want it, I'm going to just put a little bit of glue down the center of all of these so it lays nice and flat. But this was one way I found to keep the glue from getting everywhere. So pretty. And this rainbow adds such a nice little pop of color to the card. I'm going to put an acrylic block on top to help hold that glue flat while it dries. And we're going to tuck our little leprechaun in between the two layers of grass here at one end of the rainbow. You can see I've die cut Lucky to Know You. And I die cut it from some smooth white cardstock and I really thought I might use this Clover's stencil, but I'm ultimately going to use that for the envelope instead. And we're going to die cut our sentiment. So see here I have two of those grass borders. We're going to die cut our sentiment from some gold cardstock from Lawn Fawn. This is a beautiful gold metallic and I'm not going to layer it. A lot of times I'll layer it to make it a little bit thicker. I don't really think we need that here so I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay it at an angle, this Lucky to Know You. This is from Simon Says Stamp. It's been out for a little while, but I loved how well it worked with a St. Patrick's Day leprechaun type of card. I don't really make St. Patrick's Day cards all that often, but I think this is a good one, kind of an encouragement type one any, or an anytime type of card. And I really liked that about this design. So I'm just really slowly piecing this together and I know it's a little tedious and time consuming. I keep putting my acrylic blocks on top to hold that flat while the glue dries. And then we will go ahead and place our last word here. And I think it will be cute embellished, embellished with some of the little teeny tiny shamrocks from the Leprechaun die set. A great little tip when you're dealing with fine die cuts is I love to use some craft tweezers to hold on to them while I add glue and also to help place them on my card. I've got this hope you find your pot of pot of gold little sentiment strip and we're going to put foam adhesive on the back of this and pop it along the bottom of the card. From this point on, it's finishing details. And I always say the details are one of my very favorite things because they make the card just complete. In this case, we're gonna add some little shamrocks around the sentiment into the leprechaun's hat. We're gonna add some like gold star confetti around and then the little gold, or we're gonna die cut some gold horseshoes from the leprechaun die set and tuck those down around the base of that pot. So let's go ahead and glue our little first little shamrock, which it's four teeny tiny pieces. Craft tweezers are going to come in super handy again here. And we're going to glue our little shamrock to his hat. And I did die cut this from Lawn Fawn Noble Fur Cardstock. And I'm using my craft tweezers and like a embellishment wand or crystal katana for any of these little teeny tiny pieces. It's going to make it much easier to pick things up and put them where you want them to go. And then you can kind of move them around a little bit at this point and make that shamrock look a little bit better. And I'm going to put 
a little glue on the back of one of these horseshoes and tuck it down here. I want to use both of them and I did play around with this a lot. I played around with placement and ultimately I'm going to set it aside for a second and come back to it and show you how I made it work. I've already placed my sentiment strip down and I didn't want to lift it up and so I'll show you how I fix that. A little glossy accents around the shamrock and also the buckle on the hat is going to be a great little finishing touch that makes it stand out a little bit more. Nice glossy finish. We want to add those remaining two shamrocks up around our sentiment up at the top of the card. I did that off camera and then I'm going to trim off the bottom of my horseshoe and make it look like it's tucked back behind this sentiment strip. I'm using the, the cut off bottom portion to help serve as a guide. I need to cut off a little bit more and then it just looks like it's sticking up from that sentiment. I'm going to put little dabs of glue all over and add some of this these matte gold star confetti all over which they match the gold in the sentiment beautifully. I love how it kind of ties it all together, gives it that lucky magical type of feeling. And I have lots of these spread all over the card. I love little confetti pieces as a finishing touch. Now because this card is very theme specific and I have really been loving trying to add a little something to my envelopes. I guess I don't always, but it's something I've been trying to do more and more because I don't know about you, but I love a themed envelope. I am going to take that clover stencil that I tried to use for the card and we are going to embellish the envelope a little bit. So we have a Simon Says Stamp white envelope here and we're going to take our die, our stencil rather, and a little rustic wilderness ink and we are going to do a little trio of shamrocks right here in the bottom right corner of the front of the envelope and I'm concentrating my ink mostly in the center. We're going to lift that up. I did clean the stencil each time. I didn't want to accidentally smear um, any of the ink from the previously stenciled image and we're just going to kind of do a nice little trio here on the front and then on the back flap we're also going to stencil one of them and it's such a very simple easy thing but I think it adds so much to the design and it kind of gives the recipient an idea of what to expect when they open up the envelope. I would love to know, do you guys stencil your, or pardon me, not stencil, stencil, yes, stamp or stencil or whatever it might be, your envelopes, do you like to decorate your envelopes? Definitely drop us a note and let us know here. We're going to flip it over and let's just go ahead and do one more real quick. Just going to reuse my post-it tape that masks off any of the areas I don't want to stencil before we add that. And then I'm going to show you the set together and how cute it looks. So coordinated, so quick and easy. I want to stencil all the envelopes now. Just going to pop that away. And then I think most of the glue is dry on my card. So let's grab the card and see how this set looks together. And we're going to trim off the top of the loop of the word lucky as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Making the Cut card featuring Simon Says Stamps and Dies. The supplies I use to create my card and envelope are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another Making the Cut video that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.